This is a film from a German director called Sebastian Schipper, um, who's not particularly well known, but the Victoria itself has become incredibly talked about over the last few months because it was shot in one single take. Now, on an April morning in Berlin, two years ago, between about 4.30 a.m. and 7 a.m., uh, Sebastian Schipper and his, you know, obviously incredibly talented crew and cast uh, started in an underground nightclub and then for the next two and a quarter hours told this kind of romantic thriller storyline all in one unbroken shot. And so there are no cuts in the final film and no joins. What you see is what the camera saw uh, on that day. And so in itself, that is a serious accomplishment. You know, long takes are something that are back in fashion now. Birdman, for example, kind of passed off the bulk of its narrative as one single take, but it was stitched together uh, from various different ones. You know, you can do that with CGI now and with obviously with digital, you can run a camera forever rather than the olden days where, you know, a canister of film would maybe last for 10 minutes. And then as in Hitchcock's rope, you'd have to do a kind of a cheeky dissolve as the camera passed behind someone's back to pick up on the next thing. But now you can run and run and run. Um, and people were so doubtful that um, Shipper had pulled this off. When he started submitting the film to film festivals, they were rejecting it and saying, well, we just don't believe that this is what you did. You know, we, there's like obviously a con involved here. Like seeing magic. Exactly, exactly. But this film actually is the, the, the real magical deal. Now, it stars a Spanish actress called uh, Laia Costa, who plays a title role. She's a young woman from Madrid who's living in Berlin. And she can't particularly speak German very well, but she works at this organic cafe and she does the early shift. So before she goes to open up the cafe, she is out clubbing. And on her way out of the club, she meets this group of uh, very friendly German guys who say, you know, oh, come and hang around with us for a bit. You know, let's just um, get some beers and have a nice time and wander the city. We're going to show you the real Berlin. And so she does that for a while. And the camera kind of naturally weaves its way around the city. And something that Victoria does very, very well is use the natural geography of the city to inform the plot. So as we would, if we were wandering around the city, when you reach a crossroads, you have to make a choice. Am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? Am I going to go straight forward? And the, the way in which this single take has been choreographed very cleverly puts big decision points for Victoria at crossroads, at junctions. She gets somewhere, she has to decide, am I going to go to work? Am I going to stay with these guys? The momentum of her relationship uh, with one of the guys who's called Son, um, he, they, they kind of hit it off. They sort of always have a, have a kind of a chemistry going on. And this chemistry picks up momentum and, and builds and builds and builds until a kind of a point where uh, of no return. She likes him enough to make an incredibly bad decision about what she's going to do with the next few hours of her life. And things go, um, without giving too much away, things get very dramatic and slightly crimey and uh, a little bit uh, I exciting. Now, I think, you know, the first part of the film does have that kind of feel of Richard Linklater, walk and talk. It is very romantic. It has this lovely feeling for Berlin as a city at night. Something else as well as using the geography of the city is it uses the natural light very cleverly. You start off with the whole place being lit in this kind of orange, yellow, sodium, street-like glow. And then as dawn starts to break, the image obviously becomes more blue, more cool, more purpley. And so there's this idea of progression happening that way. And then when it makes this hard left turn into more conventional thriller territory, the reason it gets away with it is because of the long take of the film itself. So you think, well, we've naturally come to this point anyway. You know, this hasn't been edited. It hasn't been reshaped in a studio at all. This is the path that this life has taken. This is something that the film does incredibly well. Um, I think something else that's very clever about the staging is that because she can't speak German, it allows these guys to talk to each other in front of her and communicate information to each other and the audience because the German dialogue is subtitled that she's not able to pick up on. So any kind of drawbacks that you can have with having to just stay on one point of action for two and a half hours, for two and a quarter hours rather, are very, very cleverly elided by the film's structure. Mm. Now, I think it's, you know, it, what it does very, very well is 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 uh, impress you with its sort of formal daring and the ambition. I'm not sure that much about this film impresses me beyond that. And that's why I don't necessarily love it as much as other critics have done. I mean, it's got some terrific reviews. Tim Roby, my colleague at the Telegraph, gave it five stars. And um, I think without ad admiring it, without admiring it for the way in which it's been made is quite tricky because everything that it does well, it does as a result of this momentum, but it really captures the way in which life can have a dangerous momentum mm. and decisions that you would never make from a standing start can seem like the obvious or sensible thing to do mm. when you come barreling at them from a different direction. I watched this movie having come back from an all-nighter in Berlin. 
So I was, I was very, I was very. I'm, I'm assuming this all nighter didn't. <laughs> it didn't involve any ever. crime. Right. Good. Um, just, a, just a very good time with some very close friends, and uh, you know, so I was more than ready for it. In fact, the two areas uh, where the the movie takes place in Kreuzberg and Mitte, I had, I had been out in both of these areas. Mitte is is very well to do. Kreuzberg's really kind of grimy, um, lots, lots of sort of dive bars and, and underground clubs. So it, it, it really struck me straight away that, but I knew nothing about the film. Um, uh, attending the screening, nothing. I didn't know that it was going to take a, 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 any kind of criminal edge, and and that's how I, I would hope most people get to see it because you wait less for um, a big event. You're just taken by the world, and it becomes a bit. It, well, for me anyway, it became a bit more of a a character study of this woman and why she was making the choices that she was making, and also it filled me with a huge sense of forebo- foreboding, and I had no idea why. I was just really concerned for her. Well, it very cleverly seeds stuff that's going to happen later by little echoes beforehand. Mm. Like there's a moment when she first meets the guys where they go into uh, um, a kind of an all night grocery shop. And they're going to get some drinks to take up to the roof to watch the sunrise. That's right. And the guy at the counter is asleep. And she has this moment like, you know, I'm here. There's a party going to happen. Do I need to pay for this alcohol or not? And she makes a decision that's then reflected, obviously, in a much, much larger way by a later decision that she makes. So the film kind of seeds all of the stuff that you might think would be implausible later. It, mm. it, it, it does early on as well. I mean, I think as well, opening it in a nightclub is incredibly clever because you just have this uh, stroboscopic light and a few minutes of dancing to, to get yourself acclimatised to the, the mood and energy of this film. And I should say two and a quarter hours, but it flies past. It, you know, flies it, feels like, it feels like an hour tops. And the idea that one piece of music is segueing seamlessly into the next, you know, you've got a DJ mixing. This is how life is experienced. You know, you don't hear life as a separate set mm. of tunes. Mm. It's just one continuous melody that develops in different ways. So you have that all being seeded early on in a way that's spelled out structurally in the film later. And according according to Shipper, there's a there's a cut version which he had just as a backup that he said is rubbish in comparison. <laughs> yeah. So they had to, I think they had That's to run words. through it three times and then they used the second version which was the most kind of seamless and, uh, yeah. and it, it's, it's, it's an incredible feat. 